clearly now the rain is gone I can see all obstacles in my way Gone at the dark clouds that had me blind It's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day I think I can make it now, the pain is gone All of the bad feelings have disappeared Here is the rainbow I've been praying for it's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day Look all around, nothing but blue skies Look straight ahead, nothing but blue skies I can see clearly now the rain is gone I can see all obstacles in my way Gone are the dark clouds that had me blind It's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day It's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day Look all around, nothing but blue sky Look straight ahead, nothing but blue skies I can see clearly now the rain is blue I can see all obstacles in my way Gone are the dark clouds that had me blind It's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day it's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day It's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day Aloha and good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Center for Spiritual Living Kauai. My name is Michelle May, and I'm on the Board of Trustees. I am also a licensed practitioner, and I'm going to share all the fun things that we've got going on. Everything I share with you is also on the program that you received when you arrived. So if you need more details, timings, costs, Anything like that, you already have them in your hot little hands. But we are very excited. The first thing coming up this week is something that's brand new. It's called Power Talks from the Heart. It's going to be one topic for people. So this time, for our very first one, it's called Paradise is a State of Mind. And you're going to be hearing from Reverend Walt, myself, Charles Wolfuck and Judah Friedman. So come and, and yes, it's going to be powerful. So come and join us. That's going to be this Tuesday, t the times aren't here, the, September the 11th from 6.30 to 8. Okay, thank you. Who was not here? So we're very excited for that. It is going to be something that will be monthly. We're just kicking it off this month. We also have starting... A brand new class. If you have any questions, please see Reverends Rita and Patrick afterwards. It's called Ernest Holmes Now and Then. It's the basics of science of mind and how we apply them today. Now, there is a sign up on the information desk out back. It's 10 weeks. They're going to be on Wednesdays starting September 19th from 6.30 to 8.30. And I know there's been a little bit of confusion. So first of all, this is a fabulous class to learn what it is that we teach here on 
on Sundays, but bring it out of Sundays and into your lives in an everyday manner and then delving really deep. So if you're just wanting to take the class, just to take the class to learn more and bring this into your life, that's fabulous. And then if there are those who are wanting to take it a little bit further, perhaps, or have a chance to do that, then you can make it an accredited class and have it count towards credit, kind of like college. But you don't have to do that. So I know there's been a little bit of confusion, but there's options galore. There's plenty of us who have taken the class as well. And then, of course, see the reverends after service if you have further questions or just want some more clarification. So that's very exciting. And that's starting September 19th. Then next Sunday, directly after service, is going to be our monthly Women in Consciousness group and Men's Mindful Treehouse directly after service. So we invite you to join us for that. If you'd like to bring any little snacks or treats to share during that, please feel free to do so. And then also on the following week, September 18th, we're going to have a meditation evening with Reverend Diane. That's something we're also going to be bringing monthly. You're going to see things coming more consistently and on more of a monthly basis. So we have lots to choose from. And again, you can come and check anything out that resonates for you and share it with your friends and family as well. Anybody is invited to join us. Then at the end of the month, we're going to have our New Thought meet and greet, and it's going to be Reverend Rita this month talking about Anton Mesmer. So have you heard of hypnosis? Yes, mesmerism. So he is the father of that, essentially, and you can come and learn all about him and the birth of hypnosis. So lots of exciting things happening here at CSL. We thank you for all those who come and participate in your spiritual journey and bring that with us and do that here and call CSL your home. So I'd like to introduce Reverends Rita and Reverend Patrick. Woo. Enjoy your service. Thank you, thank you Michelle. Wow. Welcome, everyone. We do have a lot going on, don't we? Yeah. Yes. Um, just a little recap of our week. We had a wonderful healing circle um, on, on Wednesday or Tuesday, whenever it was. It was this week. If you were there, you'll remember. If you weren't, it doesn't matter. Um, but let me tell you, this is something that we're really, like we were saying, we're making sure we do more and more of it because we are a healing center and a teaching center. So these are so healing and so powerful, and we had a great group of people uh, this week. And also, we just want to mention, uh, Reverend Diane has now reached out as the reach out person uh, on this island, and we just want to really, pr uh, as the reach outreach mi minister, and uh, if you just stand for a second so people know who and what... This is what this is this is what produced this wonderful suicide prevention awareness yesterday. We went out there, and I just want to give her kudos for making sure we all got there and and just jumping right in and doing that. It was a very powerful day yesterday, and uh, going on with the peace uh, every week. What we do is we just start with peace from within. Uh, but since yesterday, I was a little moved at this. Uh, the suicide prevention uh, awareness. And there was a, um, um, it was a beautiful time, but there was a, the choir was there from Kapa'a Middle School. And they had just lost their, um, one of their friends who was 13 years old. Um, and his name is Dylan. And he needs to be remembered along with a whole bunch of other people. When you're 13 and you're wondering if life is worth living, then we have some work to do. We have some awareness to get out there. And it starts right here, right now, where we are with spirit. Because once we can do that, we are that walking example of peace and love. And we will be able to look at one another and see when that call is being called for us. 13 years old. So. My heart is full, but it is also filled with optimism. Because that means that everything we're doing here today and everything that we're doing in our life, it matters. That spirit has never left and spirit has not left Dylan or any of the other hundreds and thousands of people who have lost their will for this thing called life. But the good news that we get to celebrate is that they are not dead. They are very much alive. And so anyway, I didn't want to start us out quite like that, but I think that, you know what, that it's okay. 
and we need to take one thing off before I get, we need to take shame off the table. Shame has no place for these wonderful, wonderful people that need our assistance. And I'm going to tell you, I know that we have also had been in a moment or two in our own lives that we have wondered. So, ah, I think it's time for a peace candle. <laughs> Shall we take a nice deep breath together? Because I love you. Ah, breath of life, the breath of life. So let's just take a moment to just be with this flickering candle that flickers inside of each and every one of us. Let's take this time. And just staying in this moment called now. What I know and express in this moment is that there is no beginning and there is no end, that life is continuous. And this breath of life, this breath of life is breathing through each and every one of us and it is a celebration, a celebration of truth, a celebration of peace, that in any given moment, any given moment, Peace is right here and right now and can be expressed. So what I know and I express in this moment is absolute celebration for all of life. And today as we focus upon this wonderful, wonderful spiritual being, Dylan, I know that all that is needed to and is required for the healing of those who are left here is already done in the mind of good and that all of the assistance, all of the help is right here, right now. And I know that within each and every one of us speaks loud and clear this idea of love. Love permeates and changes anything that is the opposite of it. So celebrate. I celebrate right here in this moment life, life eternal. So with gratitude and love and peace, I simply let my word go into the law of my being, knowing that it is already done, as together we affirm. And so it is. Thank you, Patrick. So um, welcome again to Center for Spiritual Living. We are a center for spiritual living. It means exactly what it says. <laughs> we, believe in, we believe in spiritual living. We believe in taking spirit into living and not separating it from life. And we understand that the spirit, the power of God's source, is everywhere, in everything, through everything, and in everyone. And that no matter what's going on, that God is there, it's never left out. It, that source and that power is there, whatever you want to call it. You can call it God, spirit, source, divine. It doesn't really matter. It's there at all times. And that is what spirit, Centers for Spiritual Living believes and, and practices, and that we have something very powerful, a gift, and we're talking about magic um, this month, and it's very magical. It's the power of our mind and our consciousness and how we use it. And we understand that when we use our consciousness from that highest place, that our lives are transformed and our lives around us also as we become a presence of that in the world. There you go. <laughs> so we have a great little mission here that we're doing, do we not? Yes, indeed. Uh, so who is here for the very first time? You cannot hide because you have shells around your neck and we will find you. <laughs> there, I know, welcome. Welcome. We hear rumors of who each and every person is. <laughs> and I see some there too. But, but we also have information about you that we're going to share with everybody. Everybody. 
And it scares you, doesn't it? Yes. He's looking over. He goes, did you say something to him about? Um, indeed, we know, but everybody knows it. So we're not going to hold back anymore. Let's let, let him know what we know about them. Ready? You, you are, are magnificent. magnificent. <laughs> Yahoo. She goes, I'm relieved. <laughs> Ooh, they don't know that part. Oh, good. Oh, good. They didn't. Oh, yes. Yeah, we know that about you because just like peace. Peace starts with each of us individually, and we know our magnificence in ourselves first. Therefore, we recognize it in all of you. So shall we say it together? I, I am magnificent. magnificent. And if you didn't think that was enough, there's like a camera back there, like opening up for a whole bunch of people. Rob's back there, and Jonathan's back there. But these people, every week we get like emails and stuff, and they go like, Betsy Edelman um, says every week she watches. And then we have, I feel like, um, Miss Nancy. On Romper Room? No. Ooba dooba dooba doo. <laughs> but we have, see somebody out there. I see, I see a birthday out there. <laughs> I see Angela's mother who watches every week. And I see my friend Sandy. So I think what we should do... What we should do is, I think we're going to just throw all caution to the wind and sing happy birthday. How, what, how old is she today? Oh, we can't tell. 21 plus. You ready? Okay. That's to Sandy. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sandy. Happy birthday. And for everyone else, all I can say is romper, romper, do. That's, that's what, <laughs> wow, I'm all confused now. Now, so we said that to them. We said, oh, now just look to each other, do something. Say, say, I'm magnif you're magnificent. Say it, say it. You're magnificent. You are magnificent. And your haircut's magnificent. Really nice color on you. I like it. It matches your eyes. You're magnificent. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I just saw you, Ruth. So everyone want to get up on their magnificent feet if you want, and we can have our opening song. This is a song written by Karen Mitchell, inspired by the words of the healer Emma Curtis Hopkins. My good is my God. My God is my good. All the good there is belongs to me. My good is my God, my God is my good All the good I see belongs to me That's my truth with a capital T It's all about living free My good is my God My good is my God I have all I'll ever need My good is my God so what I know right here and right now is that there is good. There is a good, and I ought to have it, as Emma Curtis Hopkins said. And I know each of us has that same good, that same God, that same peace, that same love within us. And I know today we recognize it to even a higher level as we meet here today, as we join in consciousness, as we lift the planet. So I know that everything that unfolds in this celebration today is in that mind, in that highest mind of love, of peace of grace of gratitude and it moves in us and through us and out into the world as we meet here as we sing as we speak as we pray i know we lift this planet so i'm grateful to be here i'm grateful for each and every person here and for all that they bring i'm grateful for consciousness meeting consciousness at this high place so i just take this word in gratitude and i release it i let it go into law knowing that it is so as we affirm together and so it is My joy is my good, my good is my joy. All the joy there is belongs to me. My good is my joy, my joy is my good. All the joy I see belongs to me. That's my truth with a capital T. It's all about living free. My good is my God. My good is my God. I have all I'll ever need. My good is my God. 
My good is my God. My good is my God. Okay, everyone, I invite you to just, is this on? Yeah, just put it a little closer. Okay, um, I invite everybody to just relax and just close your eyes if you want and just take a deep breath as we settle down and recognize the good that is in our hearts already, already present. As we just relax into this good, I'm going to leave you with a little bit of a seed thought to think about the ponder. It is important to remember that we all have magic inside us. It's by J.K. Rowling's. It's important to remember that we all have magic inside of us.
that there is only this one mind, this one presence, this magical part of me working through everything in my life. And so knowing this, I trust and I have the faith of God in me that everything is being done in perfect, perfect order. That creative expression in my life is blooming. And as it blooms for me, I know it's blooming for each and every one of you. The creative expression is the magic of God running through and for each and every one of us. And that the relationships in my life are taken care of by this magical inner being I call God. My relationships to the earth, my relationships to individuals, to my family, I know is reaching out through each and every one of you, doing the same exact thing, paving the way for perfect relationships. that all is abundant, that all is ever giving, ever loving, ever present, whether it's my bank account or my joyful expression in life. And that health is ever present right beside whatever I might be going through, waiting for me to say yes to health. Yes to life. So knowing all of this, I give thanks. I give thanks to the demonstration of the power and the presence that is within me already, working through me, for me, and as me. Working through you, for you, and as you throughout your life, as well as mine. So I release my word into the law of being, knowing it's already done. As together we say, and so it is. Please turn to your program for a song by Karen Drucker that we can sing together. Stephanie Starrett, who just received her practitioner license 
this month, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yay. All right. Well, hey, hocus pocus. <laughs> Time to focus. All right. <laughs> Did anybody ever see that movie? I was going to watch it again, but I, th I thought that was awful. I think it was an awful movie for me. No, I, sorry, Bette Midler or whoever else was in it. Anyway, um, so the whole month's been about magic. And last week we talked about ourselves being magical, and that we are magic because we are containers and the spirit is moving through us at all times and it's magical. So we get to practice that uh, magic all the time. So I won't, don't tell me, don't raise your hand, but just reflect upon the magic that you practiced this week and, and, and what became real to you about that. And if you didn't think about it at all, maybe this next week you can think about it because in truth, everything is magical. That's what I'm finding. Um, and it's simple too. Like we had a healing circle on um, whenever that was, <laughs> Thursday, thank you. I can't keep track of the days. That was magical. We got to sit here and just let the spirit move through us and people could, you can feel the energy. It's magic. It's all magic. It's all real. It's the real, real. Not all the other extraneous stuff that we tend to focus on. And um, also, I, I, was, I was moved by the idea that, that we, we're healing like in every single solitary moment. Our bodies are magical. They're magical. They're even, even when we're experiencing some kind of distress in our bodies, our bodies come in full force to make sure that it's balanced. It does that just magically because the spirit behind it is what's doing the work. The spirit behind our bodies because spirit and matter are one thing. And we're beginning to know that now. And we're beginning to understand that we're not cause and effect that we're actually causing effect. And when we really actually realize that we're causing effect, how powerful and magical is that? So it brings me to the topic for today about hocus pocus. <laughs> so I looked up the word and I, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. The word I found was meaningless talk <laughs> or activity often designed to draw attention away from and disguise what is actually happening. <laughs> I love this. Meaningless talk or activity. How metaphysical is this? Meaning, meaningless talk or activity often designed to draw attention away from and disguise what is actually happening. Now, how often do we experience this? Hocus pocus in our life, right? We engage in meaningless talk that, that, dra that, that dra <laughs> disguises what's really happening, which is the truth behind it. Like, like Patrick always talks about um, telling our stories like over and over. We're telling our stories over and over and disguising really the feelings that are behind those stories, which is the important thing that we get to change. And I also like to, to um, refer to this as it's kind of what we call in the science as arguing for our limitations. We do really good, not all of us, but at times, some of us <laughs> do really good at arguing for our limitations. And we recognize this a lot as teachers, especially when we first start teaching a class or something and somebody's really new to this idea that we're, we are, we're creating our lives by the power and presence of God that moves within us. So people will love to put things up, the what ifs, the buts. What if, you know, like you'll say, there's a power for good in the universe and you can use it. And it's greater than you are, and you can use it. And it's the very essence of who you are. And then they'll say something like, yeah, well, what about the starving children over here? Or what about, you know, the Holocaust? Or what about, they'll bring up a million things to argue why that might not be so. Well, I'm not going to go into all that in, in a Sunday service, but <laughs> it's a great conversation. But what I know about it, and I can just say very simply about arguing for our limitations, it's what it is is it's denying that the presence and power of God is everywhere, in and through everything, no matter what is happening. And it's, tr it's, taking, it's trying to take that and separate it. It's separating things into good and evil instead of realizing everything is one thing and just because somebody's going through something, the presence of God is not there. That is not true. The presence of God and power and presence is always there waiting to reveal itself in every experience, no matter how horrific it is. 
and that's what I know, and that's what, I, that's what we teach in this teaching. So, and I stick to that 100%. There's no, there's no loopholes to it. So, and that power is love. That power is divine. It's more powerful than anything. And I think that when you talk to people that have been through horrific experiences that have made touch with that power, they understand what's brought them through the experience to the other side, even if that other side happens to be, you know, transitioning. So, there is no loophole. There is no hocus pocus. It is. This is my belief. You can take it or not. It's fine. I'm not forcing it on you. Um, but what I do know, too, is what we, when we focus on what we do want, when we focus in life on what we want to have experience, when we give gratitude for that, when we focus on the beauty and presence and power of life, that we start to become like a vibration of attraction. We know this is true. We, people have proved it over and over. We proved it in our own life. When we start focusing, people will come to me and, and tell me everything they don't want in their life. And they'll start their hocus pocus about all those things, right? And then, but when I say, what do you want? A lot of times they can't tell me. But then they'll go home and think about it. And they'll do realize what they do want. What they do want. Because when we focus on what we do want, well, that's where the magic is. Oh, somebody's talking to me. Who is that, Ruth? <laughs> Scott? Oh, Siri. Does she have something to say? <laughs> anyway, when we focus on what we do want, that's how we create the magic. We create the ma magic the other way. If we misuse it, it's fine. I mean, then all these other things start to occur in our lives, and it's all fine because eventually we're all going to meet, we're all going to come to the same place. Eventually, it, it, it's, that's where we're going in our evolution. We, we can't escape it. So, um, I want to go into this because I think it's so powerful. And we talked about it in this amazing class that Dr. Peggy taught on um, Jesus the Christ from the New Thought way of thinking. And um, I've also studied this in ministerial. And I just want to, and we've studied it as practitioners. And it's about consciousness. It's about the levels of consciousness, the degrees of consciousness. And we talked about it a lot last week in Wrap with the Revs. And I think it's worth considering and I wrote about it this morning in my blog, I think it's worth thinking about, all right? And um, the first level of consciousness that most of us, like, I don't know, I was there for a long time, is the level where we think everything is done to us. We didn't do it. It's done to us. No matter what the experience is, if the stock market crashes and, you know, we lose all our money, they did it to us. If, if we get fired, they did it to us. So we walk through life thinking everything is done to us. And I just know for a fact that I lived in that stage of, uh, for a long time when I was young. Er. <laughs> that I thought, I, you know, you put the blame on the outside. Somebody's doing it to you. And most people not most people, but a lot of people still walk in this consciousness. And, and some of us go back to that consciousness at times. And when we get upset and angry about stuff, we go back to the idea that it, we had nothing to do with it. They did it to us. So that's the first one. So you can think about that and say, well, hmm, okay, I wonder if I'm there most of the time or not at all or whatever. Then the other one is that the, the power is done by us. And I might be doing this my own way, Dr. Peggy, so please forgive me. This one is really, like I go into this sometimes. This is where, this is the way I think of it. I think of it like I'm doing it. It's done by me. Whatever I'm doing in my life, if I have to get out of debt, if I have to, um, you know, make this relationship work, if I have to um, get over some illness or whatever, I'm doing it. I'm using my willpower. It's done by me. Wow, it's exhausting. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to manifest a house. It's done by me. I'm trying to get well. It's done by me. Oh, I'm trying to compose a piece of music. It's done by me. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm trying to give this talk. It's done by me. And then I'm like, oh, God, what am I going to talk about? Okay, so that's one of them. <laughs> that one's an easy one to fall into because, you know, we always think we're supposed to be out there doing something, right? And then the other one, which is the one I, I try to live in, most of the time, is that it's done through me. That is the relaxing one. It is done through me. When I can, you know, I've given talks here now since 2013, and every Sunday, I, I still get up and go, oh, what am I going to say today? And it's not until the moment I relax and realize, I'm not saying it, it's, doing, it's coming through me, that I can relax and let go. And I think this is true with everything. Whenever I, like... 
if I'm writing or, or if I'm trying to solve a problem, when I just can relax and just stop talking about it, stop giving it hocus pocus and allow the spirit to move through me, all the answers are there. They're there. They come forward. It's like, um, I'll give an example. We wanted to have like a, an outreach ministry. This is just an example. I'm calling you out, Reverend Diane. <laughs> no, no. The thought, thought is, I could try to do it myself. Oh, I'll get it done, whatever. Or I could just say, you know what? I want, I want to focus on an outreach ministry. I know the center needs it. I know that, you know, it's something that will help everybody in the community. It's something that will help our center to be more, you know, be able to, to, to help actually help the island of Kauai and beyond. And the next thing I know, and I'm relaxed, I'm not like stressed about it. The next thing I know, Reverend Diane says, you know, I think I'd like to be the outreach minister. Now, I never says that, to, said, said you want, you, you're going to be the outreach minister. But because we live in one mind, I'm using this as a simple example, because we live in one mind, when we put something out there, Dr. Peggy, oh, it would be so nice to have somebody teach a class on Jesus. I don't really, can't really teach that right now. I don't have maybe... I don't want to go through all the work that it would take me to do that. And then Dr. Peggy writes, you know, I'd like, I'd like to have a, cl I'd like to teach this class that I'm going to teach on Jesus. I mean, this is the way it works, guys. It's like a vibration of attraction when we let go and let the spirit move through us. So, you know, it's not hocus pocus. It's the truth. <laughs> and then the other one, the last one, and this is the one where I think we're all going right now. And that is the highest state of consciousness. And that's the consciousness that masters like Jesus were. The Christ consciousness which says that it's done as me. This is where there's no separation anymore. We know when we're walking on the earth that we're walking as God, as source, and that we don't really have to do anything. All our needs are met. We wouldn't even be thinking about it. We wouldn't even be worried about what we were going to do. We, we would be walking as it. We wouldn't, it's kind of like, I can liken it to like an animal that just is in so in tuned with nature that they just know it's always there for them. And you, you can watch it. They're just totally like in sync with it. They're like one with nature. So, yeah, are we there yet? I think we are there. Sometimes we've had illumined moments, right, where we feel it and we like it just kind of breathes through us and we can just, we just see the light. We see the... We feel the energy. We feel the, uh, I guess they called it illumination. So I'm bringing this up because what I know about these things is that they're choices. I know they're choices. I know I can choose to be in the first state of consciousness now because I've already been awakened. And I'm kind of awakening you today. So, <laughs> so now you get to think about it and make a decision about it, believe it or not believe it. But I know that it's a choice. I can make a choice to go down into the dark and stay there, or I can make a choice to be up in the light and not maybe stay there, but actually bring it down into the dark and sit in the dark with the light. Like if somebody's having an issue or something, I can be there because I can be in the world, like our Master Jesus said, and not of it. I can be in the world and not of it because I understand that I can move in these different states of consciousness, and I, I actually have the power of choice. And that's what I want to leave you with today, is that we have the power of choice to decide which state of consciousness we want to be in. It's not done to us unless we decide that's what we want to think. I mean, if it serves us to feel that. And sometimes, you know, giving ourselves a pity party for a, a little bit is, is helpful <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> all right? Or we can choose to say, you know what? I'm going to let it work through me today. I'm going to let it go through me, and I'm just going to relax. So it is a choice. I know that. And um, I started reading another book <laughs> by um, Greg Braden, because I'm going to see him in a couple of months. But his book is, um, now I can't remember the name of the book, but Human by Design, I think it's called. It's a new book. But he, on the cover, it says this, and this is where we're at. And all the new thought people, present day, new thought people, scientists and spiritual the ones that mix it both together are saying this. We're moving from evolution by chance to transformation by choice. We're moving from evolution by chance to transformation by choice. So that's what I leave you with today. This idea that we are at choice. 
and that as we choose, so it is. So I know that, and I know that it also might not be like, cool, it's going to just happen right now. But if we continue to work on it and just bless our lives and give that gratitude, the gratitude is so important. If you can't think of any other thing to give, just give gratitude because there's so many magical moments in life that we can give gratitude for. So <sighs> I'm excited about this, guys. We are a choice. All right. So, um, yeah, namaste. <laughs> namaste. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> says it all, Maria, if you believe. Oh, it's very interesting because Rita and I had a lot of the same quotes today. Just to, le just to let you know how it works in our household. We both do, uh, we have the same title, same theme, and then we do our talks uh, differently, but based on that. So we don't talk to each other about that, but I just was watching all these things come and go, oh, she's using the cover of the book. Oh, she's doing oh, that. What am I going to do? Oh, let spirit, let spirit do what spirit does, baby. Because that means spirit must have something else to say. That's what I, how I look at it. But I did love that idea of the quote, which I started out with too. Meaningless talk or activity often designed to draw attention away and disguise what is actually happening. Oh my God, I've been to that party so many times. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And I don't want everyone, to, you know, a lot of times we're up here and then I don't want any of this paranoia where now you're going to be in social, you know, and, and everything goes quiet um, because you're like, I wonder if that's meaningful what I'm about to say to you. You know, we're not, we're, we're here to open our spirit, not to close it and make it all uptight. But I'm going to tell you something. This idea of hocus pocus, do we remember, I'll bring a little bit of last weekend, do you remember the incantation, incantation that we had? Abacadabra, alakazam, the power of God is what I am. 
Yeah, does it still feel good? Yeah. Do you feel blasphemous? <laughs> just, just throwing it out there, just in case. But you don't have to because we're trying to, to live in a guilt-free uh, zone here. Wow. Also, the term hocus pocus means that there's a change about to take place. We're going to, something's going to either appear or disappear, which I like. And I like knowing that I have the choice of doing that. What's serving me in my life? Disappear. It's magical. It's magical. I always stayed away from the word magic because it was like, you know, we don't want them to get the wrong idea about, you know, what's magic and what's not. And then I was like, oh, stop taking care of them. You guys are all grown adults. You'll take care of yourself. You got an inner child inside of you that'll help you if you need it. And what I realized is I want to talk about focus because I have a whole new idea about focus. Hocus pocus. Time to focus. Forget the f hocus pocus stuff. What are you focusing on? But you know what I used to think focusing was? And I have it here. I used to think focus was worrying, obsessing, pulling everyone for their opinion, talking about it until the desired outcome is experienced into form, <laughs> better known as obsession. <laughs> better known. That's what I used to think. That's how I was taught. My mother taught me. To really be focused, you got to be worried all the time. You know, because if you're not worried, you ain't doing anything, man. What do you mean everything's going to work out all right? And so I remember, bless her, I just know she's here going, if you bring me up one more time in your talk. But I used to say, Mom, Mom, there's another way to do it. We don't need to worry. And she would say to me, she said, well... I've done 92 years old. I've done a pretty good job worrying all these years. And, I, and I'm like, wait a minute. She said, yeah, did a pretty good job, right? The worrying didn't hurt, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I said, oh, Rita would say that you were arguing for your limitations, but I'm not going to say that to you, Mama. <laughs> lots of distractions. Lots of distraction, right? <laughs> Focus, 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 and distractions. So what does it actually mean when you focus? We were talking about that in, uh, I think it was one of the many things we do here. We were talking about distractions. I think it was Christian D. Larson, as a matter of fact, was talking about that energy, and we need to focus in because the energies go all over the place. And that doesn't mean that you can't do several things. If that were true, I'd be in a lot of trouble. Because we do a lot of things here at the Center for Spiritual Living Kauai and in our lives. But it means that when you're present, are you focused? That multitasking is just a big lie to keep you all busy and distracting you from what you're really feeling. It's not a waste to feel. Wow. That's what I like, going under the stories, going underneath the stuff that says, oh, I can't, or I can, or I can't. But what are we doing? What are we focusing on? In November, I'm going to give you a little teaser. We're going to do these uh, little bands for No Complaint World. Hello. You have to switch them from wrist to wrist every time you complain, or or gossip. Wow, it's going to be quiet, man. It's going to... I've been trying it with a rubber band just with Rita, and she's like, does that constitute, um, you know, and, and, and looking for, you know, not her, but we're going to all look for a loophole. I was just, I was just saying facts. I was just saying the facts. But, but it's, it's about focusing, right? And I hear that it, like, changes lives. Edwin Gaines said her whole life was changed when she did this idea of no complaining for 21 days. Try it. Try it, man. Practice, because we're coming in November, passing these things out. And I just know there's going to be a lot of you going, I'll take, well, I'll get back to you in December. And so it's about our focus. And what happens when we focus on the good or the, the positive? You have room for such creation. 
Oh my gosh. So what does it mean? Somebody you say somebody looked at you or they said something and your and your mind is going, I wonder if they're mad or if they're whatever. That's about all you need. I wonder how Michelle's doing. You don't look upset, but I wonder how you, how Michelle's doing. Hmm. She seemed a little upset. Not like, well, the last time Michelle was upset, I remembered blah 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 blah. Stop it. I'm talking to me, by the way. We're talking about the divine frequency. And I don't know about you, but I know that divine frequency that runs through me as me, creates through and as me, doesn't have a lot of time for gossiping about it. Right? So, what, so I'm not here to like, because I just know everyone's like thinking right now in their head, you know, oh, wow. Do I do that? Who cares? The only thing that we're talking about here is where are you focusing? And the only way to focus is to be in the moment. That's it. When I'm with you, I had somebody one time, I hugged them, and I did the, the I gotta go hug. You know which one that is. That's like, oh my God, gonna see ya. <laughs> you know, and no, no, nowhere present, anywhere near. And I went back because I'm evolved <laughs> by choice. And I went back and I said, we need to redo that. Hi, how are you? Yeah, good to see you. Really good to see you because I'm actually looking at you. Does that make sense? Yeah, because we're busy. Now, Joe Dispenza, I got a, which was not in her quotes. <laughs> the quantum field responds not to what we want. It responds to who we are being. Oh, Bear is repeating. The quantum field responds not to what we want. It responds to who we are being, which has always been what science of mind and unity and all of the wonders, new thought has always said. We must become what we want to experience. We wonder why things don't work. It's because we are focused upon what is not working, and then just creating more and more and more from it. This is nothing to be upset about. This is something to celebrate. Oh, something's not happening in my life the way I want it to be. Oh, w what's happening? Oh, what is? Oh, yeah. So, Joe Dispenza, which is very interesting because I'm totally getting into this, to his work. And he says, in terms of quantum creating, can you give ooh, thanks for something that exists as a potential in the quantum field but has not yet happened in your reality? We've already proved it. Right? Yet, I do ask, because everybody's like, yeah, we do that every day. But why do we worry? Why are we questioning whether or not it can really happen? I mean, we're on like our, you know, what, 100th house here on the, um, <laughs> on the island. And each time, you know, I have that moment of going, uh, oh, I, 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 we have to find a new home. I'm, I'm wondering, you know, like, like it was the first concept that ever happened. It just happened a year ago. And we've already been proving it, scientifically proving that our word has power. So the question is, is it? So spiritual mind treatment, fourth step. Thank you. Thank you for it already being so. And then you seal the deal by getting out of the way. You know, it's that like, I know, I feel it, I am, I am this. Oh, God. It's almost the first of the month. I don't even have the rent. I don't know. Where was all that magic frequency? Yeah, that we always have and that we use. So this quantum physics is the only place to live, causing an effect. How nice, because before it felt like we're cause and effect. Cause out there first, comes here. Quantum swimming is fantastic because when you're swimming in that sea the sea of potentiality all things are possible 
So, before I leave you, I have a wonderful little quote I, that I love that I've been sharing this week with a few of you. <sighs> Takes practice, you guys. I see that on your face. Ah, takes practice. Did you know? Takes roughly 10,000 hours worth of practice to master, become a master of anything. 10,000 hours. Seems like a lot, right? Well, you're going to be using those hours anyway. It's like the people who say, well, I don't know. I can't go back to school now. I'm 50 or whatever. I'll be 55 when I get out. You're going to be 55 anyway. <laughs> That's just arguing for the limitation. You're going to be it anyway. 10,000 hours from now, we can be a master or we can be one in one hour from now or in that moment. So Ernest Holmes says this. And this is magical. How you seal the deal is, and so it is. It isn't, and so it is, maybe. <laughs> really take the power of the, and so it is. I'm bouncing. I'm back to bouncing. Yes. Michael Beckwith is here, man. <laughs> Here's how it works. And so it is. So Means it's done. It doesn't, it, 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 it does, no more conversation. It doesn't leave it open for that. It means you've worked it all out. I'm going to do them just these steps real quick. You re remember, oh my God, who I am. Oh my God, I forgot who I was. I am the very power that created everything, the cosmos. I am not the power, I am the power. Wow. Steps one and two. And then, with all that power, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to do some compromising. I'm going to do some deal making. I'm going to do... No! You're going to say, whoa! I have that power. Watch what I do. Watch how I live. I want a house? Baby, I want two of them. Don't judge me. <laughs> you know, I want to be well. You better believe I am well, because that's who I am and who I have always been. Oh, with that power is why we can claim it. If not, then you're just swimming around, going, I hope, crossing your fingers. The fourth step is saying, thank you for the demonstration of my health. Thank you for the demonstration of the, the perfect relationship. That perfect relationship. I don't care up until now. I don't know what it was. But I do know from this moment on, it's perfect. That's the power we're talking about. That's the magic we're talking about. And then you just say, thank you, thank you. When it's saying, oh, thank you, it's done. Then you get out of the way. And you just allow that to work through you as you. Wow. And it doesn't have to be this dramatic. Sometimes it's just, yeah. And so it is. And so it is. So this is what our wonderful Ernest Holmes said. When we treat, and I want you to take it in, however that looks for you and however that feels for you. When we treat, we do not wish. We know. We do not dream. We state we do not hope. Ah, we accept. We do not pray. Ooh. Uh-oh. Mr. Holmes. We do not pray. We announce. We announce. That's what prayer is. Announcing. We do not expect something to happen. We believe that it already has happened. When we treat, we do not wish, we know. When we dream, we state. We do not hope, we accept. We do not pray, we announce. We do not expect something to happen. We believe that it has already happened. And then we seal the deal. And, and so it is. is. Have at it. Namaste. So grateful. <laughs> wow. Fired yeah. up now. Great. I'm fired wow. up. 
I'll see you in social. We'll see what we all got to say to each other. <laughs> okay, it's our time of giving. And um, thank you in advance for supporting Center for Spiritual Living Kauai. Yesterday we were able, we have a tithing fund here. We give 10% we give out of what comes in. And we disperse it among different organizations and people that we feel are spiritually nourishing. So um, we were able to give an, a nice donation to the um, suicide prevention um, organization. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we're going to continue and with so that one, you too. are a part of yeah. that. Because <laughs> everything you're giving, we yeah, give out to that. I know. So somebody yes. turned to me and said, I wanted to give something. Blah, blah, blah. I said, well, you did you, because you, you tied to CSL Kauai. So <laughs> <laughs> part of your tithe went to that. So there anyway, you thank you in advance for supporting us and supporting CSL Kauai and, and the island and every, everywhere it goes because it does go out. So turn to your program. There is a, um is affirmation in there that we can reason. read together. Ready? I freely and joyously give from the abundance and fullness of my overflowing wealth, knowing my gift goes with love as it touches and blesses Center for Spiritual Living Kauai, my life, and the world. And so it is. Join me in the song um, by Karen Drucker. I think it is. Gratitude before me, gratitude behind me, gratitude to the left of me, gratitude to the right of me, gratitude above me, gratitude below me, gratitude within me, gratitude all around me. I'm so grateful. us to just be in that gratitude right now and thank you so much for all of the blessings from this ever giving thing called life called God streaming through you giving back to you constantly never ceasing thank you so much from CSL thank you for um, the live streaming audience who gives beautifully thank you thank you thank you and so we bless this to go forward to assist in the lives of so many people. Thank you. And so it is. So it is. All right. I think we have some children wow. with George today. They're right on deck here We actually here today. have some children today. Yay. I know. I know. I know. I, know. <laughs> I always have to warn them. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said he was going to give that to Patrick. <laughs> okay, today we worked on a little rock. We worked on turtles because the, we are all connected in the one life that is spirit and with, especially with animals and they have things to show us. So they also have the things. Hold up your little rock but because they did a turtle and they did a bear on it. Oh, I should use this? Okay, thank you. <laughs> yes, he's giving that to you. He says he's going to give that to Patrick. <laughs> and he made this, and I had to hold it because it's still got plenty of uh, ink, on, ink on it, paint on it. No, no, I got it. What else? That's it. So let's just bless you, bless you, beautiful children, all right? It's in your program, but ready? 
You are amazing. You are perfect. You are magnificent. And we love you. And so it is. Yay. Thank you, George. Yay. So let's ask the practitioners that are serving today to come up. Oh, Maureen's up here putting, <laughs> putting her, her change in our, um, on our building fund over there. We'll talk about that later. Okay, so who's serving today? You're serving? Michelle and Reverend Diane and Stephanie, are you serving today? Yeah. No. Yeah, okay. The, 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 and oh, and Harvey and Teresa, are you going to serve today? Yeah, They're uh, visiting practitioners here, so yes, yay. Come on up. Come on up. Yeah. Good. We have a good group up here today. Great. So it's all about if something is coming up for you that you want to know more truth about or want to focus on, these beautiful, amazing consciousnesses up here <laughs> will know the truth with you. They will do a spiritual mind treatment with you. And then if you want to go further into it with them or with any one of us, you can always set up an appointment. There's a practitioner brochure on the table out there that tells you all about what practitioner work is about. and and tr spiritual mind treatment. So pick one up as you're leaving if you want, if you have questions about it. But in the meantime, come up and have a blessed, a blessed time with these wonderful beings here and get a taste of what it's like to have a spiritual mind treatment. All right, is there anything else? I think it's good. All right, so I think we're ready for our new closing song that we're learning by Faith for So everyone wanna stand if you so feel good. So let's stand. Thank you, Maria, for learning it. <laughs> Today is the day I will change my luck I will find three pennies and they'll be heads up I will walk like a queen in my tennis and jeans Cause I know where I come from From the stars and the sun, from the magical one I am part of this thing called life, yeah From the known to what's seen and everything in between I am part of this thing called life I think I, today's the day. <laughs> I, I can say it right now. Yay, yay. So I'm just bathing in gratitude right now for each and every one of us right here and right now. And it is always time to just give a special gratitude to Michelle, who does the announcements, does so many wonderful things here at the center. And we just say yes, yes, yes. And our Malama team, which was Angela, Maureen, and Deb, who's now counting the abundance back there, so double Deb. And I just say, yes, thank you, thank you. And we got that, we are shared with the mainland and all around because of Rob Jones and that magical camera, that magical live stream, and the magical man next to him, which is Jonathan, making sure that we sound good. And Arlene brought some flowers today, but I know Rev Walt brought some flowers today for a beautiful lady who would have been 103 two today, and that's his mother. So we say yes, happy birthday. And so knowing that, we also know that Ron's back there doing what Ron does ba best, and that's everything. And, uh, and we just say thank you, Ron Stover, and your magical team. And we have Roseanne Jones bringing out the magic of the written word back there in the bookstore. And we have our beautiful practitioner, Stephanie Starr, better known as Starr, whatever you want to call her, she will answer to it today. And we just say thank you for uh, being our lead practitioner today. Maria and Luis over there bringing us the vibration, that vibration of music. And George with our beautiful youth back there. And our future is right back in that room. And Deb and Roseanne are actually back there, like I said, counting that beautiful abundance that's in the baskets. And I thank this beautiful lady next to me, which is Reverend Rita, for the absolute um, beautiful energy that you give to this island and to the center and for me as well. And I will not leave me out, as you well know. <laughs> I give absolute, absolute thanks for this presence, this spirit expressing as Patrick, as Reverend Patrick. So I say thank you, and I say thank you for each and every one of you, everyone watching on live stream. Thank you to the entire planet. Thank you to the cosmos. Whatever's going on out there, there is something happening, and we're grateful for it. So I just know that we've come together on purpose today, and we are leaving even more 
Ah, enlightened than we were when we came in. So I say thank you to each and every one of us. So we let it go, we let it be, as together we say, and so it is. Yeah, today is the day I remember to see Only good, only God happening through you and me I will not forget all the treasures to me Cause I know where I come from From the stars and the sun, from the magical one I am part of this thing called life, yeah From the known to a seed and everything in between I am part of this thing called life I am one with this thing called life Yet yeah, today is the day I'll be more of myself Love my skin where I've been and everyone else No more push, no more pull Simply flow as I go Cause I know where I come from From the stars and the sun From that magical one I am part of this thing called life Yeah from the known to unseen and everything in between I am part of this thing called life I am one with this thing called